Welcome to Unit 4, Part 3, some more CPU scheduling practice. We will be doing three algorithms in this CPU scheduling practice. We'll do priority, preemptive priority, and round robin. So just to remind you about the calculations, we will be calculating turnaround time, wait time, and response time per process, and then averages. So first we will start with a non-preemptive example called priority. In this case, we have all processes have arrived. They have arrived at time zero at the same time, uh, but we're going to queue them up and use the algorithm where priority one is the highest. So you can see the priority column. And so let's get started. We start at time zero and we're gonna pick the one that has the highest priority, which is P2. It will go for one time unit and this is a non-preemptive version, so it'll finish its CPU burst and it will be done. Now the current time is one. We will pick the one that has the next highest priority, which is P5. It will go until time six, and it will complete its CPU burst and it will be done at time six. Now the current time is six, so if we take a look, we will the next one to go will be P1 until time 16. And now the current time is 16. We will run the next priority, which is P3, until time 18, followed by P4 until time 19. Now, since we have 100% uh, CPU utilization, if you add up all of the burst, it should equal 19. And since we don't have any preemption or any extra waiting time, the wait time and the response time will be the, t the same because all of the processes only waited one time. And the assumption was that they all arrived at time zero. So we will take a look now that P1 arrived at time zero and first got the CPU at time six. So P1's wait time is six. P2 arrived at time zero, first got the CPU at time zero. So P2's wait time response time is zero. P3's wait response time is 16. P4's is 18 and P5 waited one time unit before getting the CPU. And then to calculate the turnaround time, you take the last time when it terminated and subtract the arrival time. P1 finished at time 16, P2 at time one, P3 at time 18, P4 time 19, and P5 time six. So with that, you could add them all up and divide by five and you would get the average wait, wait time and the average turnaround time. Moving on, this time we're going to do preemptive example. In this case, we have them arriving at staggered times, so we need to take that into consideration, And but we still have priority one the highest. So let's get started. At time zero, we have P1, but because P1 is a priority three, if a priority two or a priority one arrive, P1 will be preempted. So you can notice that at time three, we will have the arrival of P5, which is a priority two, which is a higher priority than P1. So P1 will be preempted and will have a seven time units of CPU burst left and a new arrival time at time three. Now P5 will go, since P5 has a priority two, it may be preempted by a priority one, which this is the case that P2 is going to arrive at time four and P5 will now be preempted and we'll have four units of CPU burst left and we'll have a new arrival time of time four and now P2 will go. Now it doesn't matter how long P2 CPU burst is because P2 is the highest priority. So it will get to stay on there and nothing will preempt P2 and P2 will, P2, P2 will finish at time five. Now the current time is five and in our ready queue, we have P3, P1 and P5. So we're going to pick the one that has the lowest priority, which is P5, and P5 will finish at time nine. And now the current time is nine, and we all of them are in the ready queue, and now it's just a matter of doing priority-based scheduling. So the next one to go would be P1, finish at time 16, and P3, finishing at time 18, and P4, finishing at time 19. So it's very important that you get the Gantt chart right, and once you get the Gantt chart right, you can make your calculations. So to make your calculations for the response time, you take the first time that it gets on the CPU and you subtract the arrival time. 
So P1 first got on the CPU at time zero and arrived at time zero, so P1 didn't wait at all. P2 first got on the CPU at time four and arrived at time four, so P2 didn't wait at all. P3 had to wait 14 time units before its first CPU burst. P4 had to wait 12 time units before its first CPU burst. And P5 had to wait zero time units. It arrived at time three and got on the CPU right away. Then to calculate the turnaround time, you take the last entry in your Gantt chart and subtract the arrival time. So P1 finished at time 16, arrived at time zero, so P1's turnaround time is 16. P2's turnaround time is one, P3's turnaround time, P3 finished at 18, arrived at two, so P3's turnaround time is 16, P4's turnaround time is 13, and P5's turnaround time is six. And now to get the wait time, you just take the turnaround time and subtract the burst time. And that will give, because the process can only either be waiting for the CPU or on the CPU, so that will give you the total time. You could also take the time from when it got into the ready queue and sat and waited. So P1 waited zero and then waited six, or you could take 16 and subtract the burst, which would be uh, 10. And so P1's wait time is six, P2's wait time is zero, P3 waited 14 time units, P4 12, and P5 one time unit. And then you take these results and divide them by five and you would get the in round robin is like first come first serve, only it is preemptive. Each process will get a certain amount of time on the CPU. So round, uh, in this case, all of the processes arrive at time zero and each process will get four time units on the CPU. So we we'll just go through them uh, and let them all have four time units and let's do the exercise. So at time zero, we are assuming they arrived in this order, P1, P2, P3. So P1 will go for four time units, and then it will have 20 time units left. P2 will go for four time units, and it will have five time units left. P3 will go for four units, and it will have 13 time units of CPU burst left. Then we just run through them again. P1, P2, P3. So now the current time is 24, and we have run through each of our processes two times. And now P1 will go again for, six, for four time units. Then P2 will go, and now P2 is completed. Then we do P3, P1. Now we just go through P1, P3, P1, P3, P1. P3 until at last P1 finishes and the current time that they all finished was time 50. So in order to calculate the response time, you take from the arrival time, which is zero until the first time. So P1's response time is zero, P2's is four, and P3's is eight. To get the turnaround time, you take the last entry in your Gantt chart and subtract the arrival time. P1 is 50, P2 is 29 and P3 is 46. And then to get the wait time, you take the turnaround time and you subtract the burst time. So P1 is 26, P2 is 20, P3 is 29. And you can take these amounts and add them up and divide by three. So you could get the averages, but you could also add up to get the wait time. P1 waited zero time units, then eight time units, then eight time units, then five time units, then four time units, then one time unit, and that equals the same. But the easier way to do it is to take the total time and subtract the burst time, because in this case, P1 is only going to be either waiting for the CPU or on the CPU. So that concludes our priority, preemptive priority, and round robin practice. And Thank you very much.